Alright, what's happening? Y'all should about Rico from Street Scores, and man, we have an interesting topic to talk about right now. Jamin Davis, the linebacker and interior offensive lineman center guard, whatever you want to call them, rookie, Ricky Strongberg, are both out for the remainder of the season due to injuries. Of course, we're going to do a full injury report because we have some updates on Emmanuel Forbes, Brian Robinson, a lot of other players on the team as well. But those are the two most notable things because both of those guys are done for the 2023 season we will not see them play for the remainder of this season and who even knows if the next regime even wants to keep Jamin davis around maybe they you trade him or something but that's a whole nother situation whole nother topic right now the main thing is the pressing issue is should the commanders pick up linebacker Jamin davis's fifth year option when is the deadline for this next regime to make that decision how much would it cost them is it worth it do i feel like we should all of that type of stuff so we got to dive into all of that and everything uh and of course i mean <laughs> with jamin davis on IR, and i know a lot of people don't like jamin davis as much and he has been disappointing especially compared to when he was picked that's not necessarily his fault but he hasn't lived up the first round hype he's had flashes but i want people to realize that i know a lot of y'all including me uh, I, I'm rooting for us to get the highest draft pick possible. Well, worry no more with David Mayo and Cody Barton is just starting two linebackers. And then after that, Khalid Hudson and friends. Woo wee, boy. You, you want a high draft pick? Don't even stress it, man. Woo wee. We're going to talk about the rest of the schedule and what those linebackers got to go up against as well. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you still farm that like button, still farm the subscription button, and still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, man. Make sure y'all stay tuned. I have so much content I'm working on. I'm going to talk about that whole Montez Sweat thing, so make sure y'all stay tuned for that. I'll probably come out with that tomorrow morning. Again, so many ideas, so many video topics I got to talk about that I'm probably going to be coming out with two videos in a day quite a few days um, in, in the upcoming future of course i will be live streaming this upcoming game against the rams as well so stay tuned for that and um and at the very least i need to be coming out with at least one video a day i had a couple of days off i was super busy now we right to it so without further ado man let's go and get to it let's get it he's our quarterback for the five ten years and i truly believe that All right, so first of all, I feel like we need to just go ahead and do an injury update. Let's just go ahead and get all of that out the way first. We're going to talk about everybody that was mentioned at Ron Rivera's press conference. Also, yeah, that a lot of this came from Ron Rivera's press conference. He had a press conference. He discussed all of these topics. We're also going to talk about a couple of things he said that have nothing to do with injuries after we get through all this Jamin Davis stuff. But before we get to the Jamin Davis stuff, first of all, linebacker Jamin Davis is headed to injured reserve. Rivera confirmed after sustaining an injury against the Miami Dolphins. He received an MRI over the bye week, and it was determined that he needed to get surgery on his shoulder the surgery will end davis's season and if like we were playing any meaningful games like if we were playing for something if we were playoff contenders or anything like that at least in the hunt then i feel like this news we would have been where i didn't even realize jamin davis was hurt like i i had no idea that's how far gone i am from like actual meaningful game wise like as far as like how much i care about us winning i mean I, it's just amazing to me that this guy's going to ir and i didn't even know he was hurt um and i watched that game too i went to like a redskins bar everything and i didn't even notice man and i've been i've been trying to make as much of an effort as i can to really like evaluate a lot of the young guys on the team especially first of all 2024 unrestricted free agents like kendall fuller tonio gibson curtis samuel with this next regime want to resign them james smith williams case to a lot of those type of guys uh, well jeremy reeves is, has been on ir for a long time but you know guys like that like i want to see if they're auditioning for the next regime led by eugene shin josh harris and whoever they bring in as gm head coach defensive coordinator offensive coordinator all of that type of stuff um so I, i've been purposely watching those guys i've been watching the younger guys emo even though emmanuel Ford was hurt against the dolphins I, you know i paid close attention to guys like quan martin and and all of the younger guys on the team anybody that's healthy enough to play uh, it's, it's basically we're to the point where it's like let's really watch these guys and see what they have what it takes to show that the next regime that they belong here 
Um, and, and for me to be doing that, and I didn't even notice that Jamin Davis is gone, is just wild. At least I don't remember him being gone. So that just shows you how ugly this season has gotten. Uh, I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all and act like I knew that Jamin Davis was potentially going on IR until I just heard he was going to IR this morning. Also, center Ricky Strongberg had his surgery and is progressing well, but he will not be back this season. So Ricky Strongberg is gone. He's been hurt for the past few weeks. He hasn't played in a few weeks. Um, and so I'm not surprised that they just went ahead and just set that down. Emmanuel Daniel Forbes, who was a threat to not play anymore this season, uh, reportedly with his elbow injury, had a good week of rehab and will be evaluated throughout the week. Um, and that's the same thing for James Smith Williams with a hamstring injury. Rivera said prior to the Commanders game against the Dolphins that if the team were to play a game the following week, he expected that Forbes would have played. So basically, Emmanuel Forbes, he's saying that if it weren't for a bye week this past Sunday, Emmanuel Forbes would have played. So that's good to hear. I mean, of course, again, our games aren't necessarily meaningful in the win or loss column but i want emmanuel forbes out there as much as possible for the remainder of this season we're trying to get as much first of all teaching tape i already talked about like the whole auditioning for the next regime thing you know emmanuel forbes needs to go out there and, and show what he can do to for eugene shin and those guys to see whether they need to prioritize corner sooner or later in draft free agency does it need to be at the top of the free agency wish list or, or the towards the bottom um right now it's looking like it's going to be towards the top but you know never you never know if emmanuel forbes just finishes very strong anything can happen these last few games but it's not like it's just one game left and then he just goes crazy and he looks like um uh, he looks like darrell revis and we're just only like man it's only one game if he somehow for some crazy reason looks like sauce garden out there the last few games that's gonna change things do i expect him to do that no but i'm happy that he's healthy enough to at least get the opportunity to do so so i want him to go out there and show what he can do for the rest of this season because it's going to affect our offseason plans even though he is a rookie this season going into the second year next season it's going to determine whether we need to get corner high in the draft early in free agency pay a top guy in free agency or just pay a depth guy type of thing like that and of course whether they want to keep kendall fuller re-sign re him at the end of the season or not that's that's going to determine a lot of things as well. That's why in my most recent mock draft, I was taking a corner within the first three rounds. Because, boy, we I think it's a bigger need than people probably realize. Uh, but um, also, teaching tape, like I just mentioned a little, um, a little bit earlier, that Emmanuel Forbes needs to play as much as possible. Said that when we're in the offseason, even before we're, we're talking mandatory mini camps, OTAs, training camp all that even before that i want him watching his own tape like, okay this is what i can do better this is what i well, this is what i already do well how can i improve on that this is what i do not do well how can i fix those things and the more tape he has the more game experience he has in regular season games not just off season practices the better that he could potentially become so i want that and then also of course like i said um he's got audition for the next regime man he's got to show us what he's got um but Moving on, Derek Forrest is still getting evaluated by doctors, and there's no update on when or if he will return this season. So Derek Forrest is just up in the air. Right now, it's a coin flip, and it sounds like it's not even likely that he returns. And then also, the team is going to check in on Sadiq Charles to see how he feels. So maybe Sadiq Charles comes back before the end of the season. Who knows? And then Rob Rivera also expects Brian Robinson to be ready to go for practice this week. So he was banged up. Um, it's good to hear that Brian Robinson will be available to come back, even though... You know, I love Brian Robinson, but right now we're in evaluation mode right now. Brian Robinson, to me, has already proven that he's, at the very least, advanced statistics-wise, whether we're talking about opinion, if we're being subjective, whatever you want to talk. But objectively, according to advanced stats that, you know, agree nor disagree nothing, like, it's just stats. They just dare. Brian Robinson is a top seven running back in the NFL. And we're not just talking, like, yards ran. We're talking efficiency. We're talking advanced stats. We're talking yards after contact per carry. We're talking about um, how he contributes in the passing game as a, as a blocker, as a catcher, as a receiver. Um, he He's top seven in a lot of really important stats for a running back. So I, I know what Brian Robinson gonna, is going to do. I know that that the next regime probably really likes Brian Robinson, even if they don't feel like he is a top seven running back. He's he has no worries about being on this team next year or not. I want to see Antonio Gibson as much as possible. I want Antonio Gibson to get as many opportunities to show this next regime that he should be here next year and beyond because. Antonio Gibson, like I already mentioned, is one of the guys who's a 2024 unrestricted free agent. So when this 2023 regular season ends, after we play the Cowboys, Antonio Gibson is no longer on our roster technically. So just go ahead and throw that out there just to let y'all know. So again, these last few games, win or loss doesn't really matter that much. 
but the reason I'm still live streaming during these games, we're going to watch these games together just like we normally would. It, a lot of evaluation stuff going on, like I've already mentioned. So there's a lot of players we're looking out for, most notably Sam Howell's development. That's number one. Can Sam Howell go out there and show he should be the franchise quarterback? Do we need to spend our first round pick, our potentially top four, top three first round pick on quarterback? Or are we going to spend that pick on building around Sam Howell? That's a big fork in the road, man. So Sam Howell, along with all of the other young guys that I just mentioned, I mean, you better go out there and show what you can do for the rest of this season. But yeah, man, moving on, let's go ahead and get to Jamin Davis right now, man. Let's get busy. That boy Jamin Davis, it's ugly. With him gone, again, like I mentioned in the intro, that means that David Mayo and Cody Barton will be our starting two linebackers. If you have three on the field at the same time, you throw Khalid Hudson out there. And then after that, even with that, that's not good. And then even just after that on the depth chart, it's not good. Well, maybe the bright side is my boy Jabril Cox finally gets out there and plays because I truly believe in Jabril Cox's talent, um, but we're just not giving him any run. Every time he's available, all he plays is special teams and things like that. So I want to see more Jabril Cox out there with Jamin Davis gone. So if there's any silver lining, maybe that means that Jabril Cox will be able to play some of these remaining games. We'll see how this goes, man. It's about to be really chaotic. But... Just to let you know, I feel like a lot of people are mostly here for this exact answer right here. How long do the commanders have until they have to figure out whether they're going to exercise Jamin Davis' fifth-year option for 2025 or not? May 2nd is the deadline. So Eugene Shin, Josh Harris, um, I'm definitely assuming, I'm 99.99% sure the next GM head coach, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, all of those guys will be here for that. Um, and they're going to come together and make that decision by May 2nd. The, the decision may not even take that long. They'll probably come in and be like, oh, definitely no before we even get anywhere close to May 2nd. You know why? Because right now, if we were to pick up his fifth-year option and actually give him that year, he would cost us $13.3 million against the cap in 2025. Does he look like a $13.3 million cap hit right now? Does he? I mean, let me know. To put it in perspective, he would be the second biggest caps hit on our roster right now. Like the only person who's a bigger cap hit right now this year. And of course, cap space goes up and up and up. Get Players get paid more and more as the years go. So that's two years from now. So, you know, things, of course, are going to be different. But right now, if Jamin Davis were that level of a cap hit, he would be our second biggest cap hit above Curtis Samuel, Kendall Fuller, Terry McClellan, Logan Thomas, literally everybody on the roster other than Jonathan Allen right now. That's insane. That's actually really scary. So I highly doubt the team is going to do that. I mean, I'm not even sure if Jamin Davis has done enough to be here, period. Like I said, they may even do whatever it takes. I, I can definitely see us being in big time sell mode when this next regime comes here. Once the season ends and then you can officially start trading again for agency, all of that type of stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if we're trading a lot of young guys. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't bring back the guys that are 2024 20, unrestricted free agents, they just may want to do a complete clean sweep overhaul, basically like an expansion team type of thing. Get as many draft picks as possible and just start all the way over. So I wouldn't be surprised like if we don't resign Kendall Fuller, Antonio Gibson, Curtis Samuel, a lot of these guys, even though Curtis Samuel has shown that he should be um, brought brought back. Hopefully he's not asking for too much money but guys like Cameron Curl all of those guys I'm pretty sure this next regime will not value them as much as Ron Rivera and company did Martin Mayhew and all of those guys so I hope we bring those guys back but I'm not too sure and, and you know of course unrestricted free agents are easy those are guys that are not on your roster you just simply don't have to resign them it gets difficult when you have players like a Jamin Davis who's on his rookie contract do you trade him for a later round draft pick the previous regime spent the first round draft pick on him maybe the next regime is like hey man We'll, we'll, we'll take a fifth for him or something like that. So he may not necessarily be safe, to be completely honest with you. Like, he, he really, really may not be safe. So you never know. Things can get really crazy right now. But, hey, man, let's just go ahead and talk about it real quick. I'm going to give you these stats. Last year, after turning around a slow start to the season, Jamin Davis finished with a team high, 104 tackles, plus three sacks, two fumble recoveries, and a pass deflection. And then in 13 games this season, you could definitely say he flashed more. Was he more consistent? I'm not sure. Um, when he was next to Cole Holcomb, that was probably the most consistent, most reliable Jamin Davis we've seen so far since we drafted him. And then when Cody Barton was out there, it was probably his most playmaking, the most he's flashed. Um, but overall, he just hasn't been very reliable 
unreliable and uh, uh, very impactful at the same time. It's like he's either reliable or impactful. He was reliable with Cole Holcomb, impactful with Cody Barton. And then when both of those guys are gone, when it's David Mayo next to him, he just hasn't been very good in general. But this past season, well, this season so far, in 13 games, he will no longer play any more games. Jamin Davis total 89 tackles, 8 for loss, 3 sacks and an interception, 2 forced fumbles, and 4 pass deflections. So... Again, I feel like if Cody Barton were healthy the whole season, Jamin Davis would have had a better season. He was playing better with them next to him. But those still aren't stats. This is like, man, there's no way we let him go anywhere. There's no way we don't trade him type of stuff. There's no way we could just give him to another team. I don't feel like he's done enough, especially in the next regime's eyes, to make sure that they keep him. Somebody throws out their fifth round pick. I don't even think teams will necessarily be calling us for Jamin Davis. I think we'll be shopping him. We'll be calling around to see... Hey, man, maybe if we throw in Jamin Davis, can we trade our fifth and Jamin Davis to get your fourth of things? I wouldn't be surprised if they go around doing stuff like that. This next regime has no emotional ties to Jamin Davis. And then he has the whole court stuff coming up. We kind of forgot about that. That kind of got delayed like a year. I think we're going to have to deal with that once again this upcoming offseason. Things are about to be very chaotic around him. Um, but right now... This upcoming season, the 2024 season, when the next regime is here and they're deciding whether or not to pick up his fifth year option, he's going to be a $2.5 million cap hit somewhere around there. But again, if we want to pick up his fifth year option, it will be $13.3 million for 2025. 2024? He's really cheap, 2.5, but 2025, he's 13.3. Just keep that in mind. And before we get up out of here, and which, I mean, actually, before we move on again, I'm not picking up his fifth-year option. If I'm Rico Street Scores, I'm not. I'm 99% sure the next regime will not as well. I mean, we were talking about whether or not we would pick up Montez or the Chase Young. Those guys have definitely been better at their respective positions than Jamin Davis has been. I mean, Chase Young, I know he's hurt for a while, but Chase Young was actually playing pretty well for us before we traded him to the 49ers. Um, and so we didn't, even Ron Rivera and those guys didn't want to keep him. So what do you think about this next regime keeping Jamin Davis, who they did not draft? So yeah, he's gone. Um, he's walking at the end of the 2024 season, unless he's willing to re-sign for a very cheap contract after the 2024 season and the 2025 offseason, or if he just somehow goes out there and balls out this upcoming, this next regular season in 2024, um, then maybe we'll see. But as of right now, where things stand, Jamin Davis's fifth year option will not be picked up. I wouldn't pick it up. So I know the next regime definitely wouldn't. Um, because I was rooting for him. And he's from, you know, Metro Atlanta area. So I've always been rooting for Jamin Davis, but he just hasn't been good enough to be worthy of a $13.3 million cap hit. In, in a single season that's crazy we're not paying them that dog you can go find a linebacker and free agency for way more value than that um but moving on before we get up out of here Rivera said that it was really good to do some self-scouting over the bye week the focus over the last four games is playing fast and playing well has to be a one game at a time mentality and being professional I don't know what any of that means other than the fact that, yes, it's time to evaluate our guys. It's time to self-scout. It's time to put teaching tape out there. It's time for guys to audition like I've been saying. But this one game at a time mentality being professional is kind of funny because, I mean, we already know it's over with, bro. We're, we're, the playoffs are done. The only discussion right now is what draft pick we're going to end up with. And right now, we have the fourth overall draft pick. I hope he gets higher to even three. And there's a chance it could be two. I did a whole video breakdown on how that could happen. What teams do we need to be rooting for? What are the percentage and odds and scenarios for that? So if you haven't seen that, came up with that video early, earlier today, make sure you go check that out. But also, one notable thing is that Rivera said that he got to see Sam Howell's footwork has improved. He wants to see him continue to step up and keep his eyes looking downfield. And I do agree with that. Again, Sam Howell's development... Him auditioning for the next regime, all of those things matter a lot right now. That's number one, like I've already said. There are a lot of other things that matter as far as player evaluation, but Sam Howe, again, fork in the road. These last four games, are you going to do well enough to where the, friend, the, the next regime doesn't take a quarterback one of those top picks? Because they're going to have their pick of somebody. Jaden Daniels, and we end up with the fourth overall pick that we currently have right now, but I think it's actually a strong chance we can end up with a, with a top three pick. At the very least, Jaden Daniels will be there. Kayla Williams, Drake May, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. We, I mean, had the pick. Somebody, at least two or three of those quarterbacks that I just named are going to be available where we pick. So, hey, man, Sam Howell, go out there and prove that they shouldn't use one of those picks on those guys. Instead of picking your replacement, go out there and prove that they need to pick the guy that's going to help you, not 
compete against you. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Of course, let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Most notably, are you willing to pick up Jamin Davis's fifth year option for that $13.3 million cap hit that's projected to be in 2025? I highly doubt a lot any of y'all are, but just let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything and the whole situation. Also, let me know why you are watching these last few games. Again, I will be live streaming these games. I've already given you the reasons I'll be watching them and why I'll still be live streaming. Let me know the reasons that you have for watching these games. I know a lot of y'all are probably going to say you're actively rooting against us so we can get a top draft pick. I already know that's going to be a lot of y'all answers. But yeah, man, I really appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Go become a channel member if you haven't already. Shouts out to all of y'all. YouTube is back in the full effect so you can donate through Super Chats, everything. So man, I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned for all the content. Like I said in the intro, catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh,